Governor Inslee, I want to bring you in. You recently signed a public option into law, which allows Washington state residents to purchase a state-backed plan if they want to, but this may only save families in Washington state as little as 5% off premiums. Is 5% really the kind of relief that the American people need? No, we need universal coverage, and I'm proud of our state that has done less squabbling and actually getting things done. And I am proud that we are the first state to offer a publicly sanctioned office, uh, offer of health care to our citizens. I'm also proud that we didn't stop there. We're also the first state that has taken care of our elders, our seniors. We have a, a looming retirement wave coming up. I'm proud that our, sta our state has made them el eligible to retire in dignity. I'm also proud of this, and I think we need to talk more about this as Democrats. It is time to give people adequate mental health care in this country. And we are, we are, we are having, uh, we've had some success in integrating mental health with physical health. There's no reason we should distinguish between your physiological and your mental health. And the last thing we're doing, I think it's very instructive for the nation. We know we're being eaten alive by pharmaceutical costs. We have had one of, if not the most innovative way to drive down pharmaceuticals for life-saving medications in the United States. That's a record of Washington State. I'd like to take to Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Inslee. Uh, Mr. Yang, I want to bring you in. You support a Medicare for all system. How do you respond to Governor Inslee? Well, I just want to share a story. When I told my wife I was running for president, you know the first question she asked me? What are we going to do about our health care? That's a true story, and it's not just us. Democrats are talking about health care in the wrong way. As someone who's run a business, I can tell you flat out our current health care system makes it harder to hire, it makes it harder to treat people well and give them benefits and treat them as full-time employees, it makes it harder to switch jobs, as Senator Harris just said, and it's certainly a lot harder to start a business. If we say, look, we're going to get health care off the backs of businesses and families, then watch American entrepreneurship recover and bloom. That's the argument we should be making to the American people. Right. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Mayor de Blasio? Yeah. I don't understand why Democrats on this stage are fear-mongering about universal health care. It makes no sense. Ask the American people. They are sick of what the pharmaceutical companies are doing to them. Ask them what they feel about the health insurance companies. They feel it's holding back their families because they can't get the coverage they need. They get a lot of no's. They don't get a lot of help from health insurance companies. Why are we not going to be the party that does something bold? that says we don't need to be dependent on private insurance. We can have a system that actually covers everyone. You know what? Donald Trump won this state of Michigan by saying he was going to disrupt the status quo. How about we be the party that's going to disrupt the status quo Thank for you. working people? Mr. Mayor, just a 15-second just a point of clarification. Who are you talking about? Who's fear-mongering? Certainly, with all due respect to Senator Bennett, what he's saying is absolutely inaccurate about taxes. Americans right now are paying so much money for their health care. Ask people about the reality of premiums, deductibles, co-pays, out-of-pocket expenses. Thank That's you. worse than any tax. Thank you. And people are paying that right now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Senator Bennett. This, 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 is, this, this has nothing to do with Republic, Republican talking boards or the pharmaceutical industry. This has to do with having faith in the American people that they can make the right decisions for their families, and they can choose a public option. Bernie Sanders, who said last night he wrote the damn bill, and he did, just like I wrote the damn public option bill, is the guy who says it'll cost $32 trillion and that, and that we're going to have to raise those taxes to pay for it. He says that. Republicans don't say it. Don't try to distract from the truth. Thank you, Senator You can't hide from the truth. I want to let uh, Mayor de Blasio, and then I'm going to come to you, here. Vice President Biden. Senator, if we as Democrats say, we're done with private insurance that has only hurt the American people in so many ways. We're going to give them something that works for their families, full coverage, that they can depend on. If we say that, then there's an election. The American people get to decide. The ultimate choice, Senator, is an election. And this should be the party that stands for universal health care and says, we're not going to accept anything less. Right now in America, so many people don't have the health care they need. That is a fact. Tens of millions of people, including middle Thank class you, people, Mayor. give them a chance you, to make Mr. that Mayor. decision through an election. Vice President Biden, your response, sir. This is not a Republican talking point. The Republicans are trying to kill Obamacare. 
Obamacare took care of 20 million people right off the bat, 100 million people with pre-existing conditions. And in fact, what we got is a public option that in fact would allow anybody to buy in. No one has to keep their private insurance. They can buy into this plan and they can buy into it at, with a thousand dollar deductible and let, never have to pay more than 8.5% of their income when they do it. And if they don't have any money, they'll get in free. So this idea is a bunch of malarkey, what we're talking about here. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, that there will be a deductible. It will be a deductible in their paycheck. Bernie acknowledges it. Bernie acknowledges it. Three, for tr $30 trillion has to ultimately be paid. And I don't know what math you do in New York. I don't know what math you do in California. But I tell you, that's a lot of money. And there will be a deductible. The deductible will be out of your paycheck, because that's what will be required. Senator Harris, I want to bring you in here. Your response? Yeah, let's talk about math. Let's talk about math. Let's talk about the fact that the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies last year alone profited $72 billion. And that is on the backs of American families. And under your plan, status quo, you do nothing to hold the insurance companies to, to task for what they have been doing to American families in America today. A diabetes patient's one in four cannot afford their insulin. In America today, Thank you, for those people who have overdosed from an opioid, there is a syringe that costs $4,000 that will save their life. It is immoral, it is Thank untenable, you, and it must change up, with Senator. Medicare for all. Vice President Biden, your response. Real quick. I have the only plan that limits the ability of insurance companies to charge unreasonable prices, flat out, number one. Number two, we should put some of these insurance executives who totally oppose my plan in jail for the nine billion opioids they sell out there. They are misrepresenting the American people what need to be done. And lastly, here's the deal. The deal is, let's figure out how this works. We immediately are able to cover everybody who wants to get off of their insurance plan they don't like, no matter what one it is, and buy into a Medicare option. Thank and they can buy the gold plan, and they're not going to have to pay. Anyway. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Let's move now to immigration, please. Secretary Castro, you think it should no longer be a crime to cross the U.S. border illegally. President Obama's Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson, whom you served with, says that is a public dec declaration that the border is, quote, effectively open to all. How is he wrong? Thank you for that question. You know, if you elect me president, you're not electing me to follow. You're electing me to lead. And open borders is a right-wing talking point. And frankly, I'm disappointed uh, that some folks, including some folks on this stage, have taken the bait. The only way that we're gonna guarantee that we don't have family separations in this country again is to repeal Section 1325 of the Immigration and Nationality Act. That is the law that this president, this administration is using to incarcerate migrant parents and then physically separate them from their children. My immigration plan would also make sure that we put undocumented immigrants who haven't committed a serious crime on a pathway to citizenship, that we do a 21st century Marshall Plan with Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala so that we can get to the root of this challenge so people can find safety and opportunity at home instead of having to come to the United States. That's how we can be smarter, more effective, and more humane when it comes to immigration policy. Thank you, Secretary Castro. Senator Bennett, what's your response? I, I, di I disagree that we should decriminalize our border. This is personal for me. My mom's an immigrant, and she was separated from her parents during the Holocaust in Poland. Uh, and for those reasons, I was part of the Gang of Eight that wrote, I wrote, the immigration bill in 2013 with John McCain that passed the Senate with 68 votes, that gave a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million undocumented people that are here, that would pass the most progressive DREAM Act that had ever been conceived much less passed on the floor of the Senate, and had $46 billion of border security. Every single Democrat voted for that bill. Senator, and a lot of Republicans. That should be our thank you. position. Thank you, Senator. That is our position Thank you, Senator. Senator Harris, you have indicated that you don't think it should be a, a criminal offense punishable by jail to cross the U.S. border illegally. How do you respond to Senator Bennett? Well, again, 
with all due respect. You know, I, after the last debate, for example, I went to a place in Florida called Homestead. And um, there is a private detention facility being paid for by your taxpayer dollars. A private detention facility that currently houses 2,700 children. And by the way, there were members of us, um, uh, Julian was there, members of Congress. They would not let us enter the place, members of the United States Congress. So I walked down the road, I climbed a ladder, and I looked over the fence. And I'm going to tell you what I saw. I saw children lined up single file based on gender being walked into barracks. The policies of this administration have been facilitated by laws on the book Thank that you, allow Senator. them to be incarcerated as though they've committed crimes. Thank These you, children have not Thank committed you, crimes Harris. and should be not treated like Senator criminals. Bennett, what's your response?